everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. It's been some time since I've done an installment in my fan theory series where I take a look at popular unresolved fan theories for the Wheel of Time and then I break it down, analyze whether the theory has any merit, give some reasons why it might be true, why it might not be true, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not the theory is plausible or not. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down a theory from Reddit user Mookin, hopefully I'm saying that right, who posted this theory originally about a year ago and just reposted it recently. The concept of the theory is that the creator didn't actually create. I won't say more until we get past the spoiler warning, but I will say this. I'm excited to break this one down for you. I will have that theory linked in the description below. But before getting into the video, I want to hit a few quick channel announcements. We have a new contest up and running for the Wheel of Time Jeopardy. If you want to be considered to play in the next round and face Angry Trevor, make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how to enter and also find out about a way that we're going to try to give back using this channel as a platform to make a difference in the world. Also, I want to give a quick thank you to audible.com for sponsoring the channel. Make sure to click the link in the description below to get your free audiobooks. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and you can get a free audiobook of your choice that you can keep regardless of whether or not you keep their service. Pick up the eye of the world and start your reread now. It's awesome. So also let's throw up a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with spoilers running all the way through A Memory of Light. Please watch this video at your own risk if you have not yet finished the series. So as with all of my fan theory analysis videos, I'll first explain the concept of the theory, go through the arguments for it, try to poke some holes in it, and then at the end I'll give you my opinion on whether or not the theory is plausible. So the concept of this theory is essentially that Rand, not the creator, is the one who created the pattern. Part of this is that the last battle was essentially the Dark One trying to influence Rand's creation to his own ends. The theory suggests that Rand is not the creator, but rather the creator of the pattern, and that the creator is more of an abstract entity rather than a god figure. So let's break down some arguments for this theory. Mukin starts by explaining what he believes to be the nature of the Dark One and the Creator. He states that the Creator and the Dark One are not entities of good and evil like everyone assumes, but rather that the Creator is an abstract concept of empathy and selflessness, and that the Dark One is an abstract concept of selfishness. They represent the fundamental and dual forces of the human ego according to the theory, that are also the fundamental aspects of Rand's mind as he is creating the pattern during the last battle, which also serves as the time, according to the theory, that Rand creates the pattern. He states that this is evidenced by the fact that when the Dark One shows Rand a world without the Creator, there was a world without any empathy. When Rand creates a world without the Dark One, he creates a world where people could not stand up for themselves or what they wanted. Both of these creations imply that the Dark One and the Creator are abstract entities representing selfishness and selflessness, respectively. Also, to support his theory, Mukin states that the last battle is where the pattern is actually woven, and that this event only happens once, not infinite times. For example, he states that the wheel is truly a wheel. If you were looking at the wheel from the outside rather than seeing infinite loops, you would see the same event coming around over and over. The moment of creation only happens once, and that is when Rand confronts the Dark One. He goes on to say that the dragon represents humanity. The Dark One and the Creator represents different sides of humanity. The Dark One doesn't win by killing Rand, but rather by breaking the will of Rand to want to act for others. If Rand becomes selfish, the Dark One wins. He states this is why if Rand had destroyed the Dark One, that the Dark One would still win, because Rand would be imposing a vision of how people should act on humanity, removing their choice, and that would be selfish in of itself. He finishes off his theory by stating that the last battle was the dragon fighting the aspects of himself in a place where he could mold reality. And this is why he could light pipes with his mind at the end of the novels. Okay, so this is one very heady theory. Let's talk about what evidence there is for it. For one, the concept of the wheel just being the same exact moments happening over and over and over again implies that time is predestined and that the literal exact moments in history will repeat over and over. 
They are not different revolutions of the wheel where different events occur similarly, but literally the exact same moment again and again. This would explain why Ishamael was wrong about how the Dark One would eventually win. His logic was that given an infinite number of chances, every possible outcome will occur in that time. If the Dark One breaks the wheel once, then he breaks it for all time and everything ends. This would actually be sound logic unless the rules and events were fixed and could not be changed. So for instance, if the Dark One could win, he eventually would given an, in number, an infinite number of chances. But in this theory, basically the Dark One cannot win. Rand will always win, Rand will always create the pattern, and the Dark One will always be sealed away. So Rand himself would seal the boar, which would always then create the pattern, and there's no chance that that could not happen. The evidence given in the theory also seems to back up the concept that the Dark One and the Creator are basically abstract entities, as I've said. They are only really given form when they are inside of the pattern, and again, that explains why Rand is able to physically reach out and grab the Dark One during the last battle. Now, let's try to poke some holes in this theory. The first thing that comes to mind for me is that there's a whole lot of assumptions being made here about the creation of the Wheel of Time universe. The stated line from the books is that the creator created the pattern, sealed away the Dark One, and then kind of let things go. The theory states that Rand as the dragon actually created the pattern, and that he created the pattern from inside of itself. Think about that for a moment. Rand was from the pattern, and then he created the pattern. This doesn't explain channeling, it doesn't explain the other worlds from the Portal Stones, it doesn't explain the World of Dreams, and it doesn't explain all of the other parts of the Wheel of Time mythology that would have been necessary at creation. Rand doesn't think about these things, Rand doesn't physically create them, but he does have this concept of choice. We all, and then of that point, we don't see Rand actually create the pattern during the last battle. We see him using the basic powers of creation in the two sides of the one power, and then the true power from the Dark One to actually repair the Dark One's prison, but not actually create the universe. Although during the last battle, Rand and the Dark One take turns creating visions of reality, they are not actually remaking reality. They're just giving visions of what could be. In the end, the reality going on outside of their confrontation is still going on. The last battle is still going on. People are still dying. People are still fighting. That reality has not ceased to exist. Rand didn't actually create anything new at this point, he just sealed the boar. So naturally then people wonder how Rand was able to light his pipe at the end, and although a lot of this is open to interpretation, I think that he did wield the powers of creation to an extent, but that was really more so how he could influence the pattern now, but he did not create it. So what do I think of this theory as a whole? Well, I love some of the concepts that it introduces. It is a theory that presents some very heady philosophical arguments, and in the end, I don't know if I buy it completely. I do think Mukin is on to something here with the wheel just being the same events over and over and over again, and that certainly explains why Ishamael was wrong about the Dark One being able to win. I also think that this brings up the idea that everything our characters did was predestined, and that they only have the illusion of free choice. This is an interesting philosophical argument that is actually put forward in our own world in connection to a number of different religious belief systems. We know Robert Jordan loved to pull in elements from other faith systems into his story, so this concept seems very fitting. We also see this in the concept of Taviran. They don't really have choices on their life. The pattern directs it. This is more of an extension of that, saying that everything that happens is already set to happen. So on the whole, I'm not sure I believe the theory. I think it's kind of difficult to understand and there's a lot of things being left out, but I do think it presents some pretty cool concepts. So that's my analysis. What do you guys think of the theory? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And before we go, I want to hit on what I teased at the beginning of the video. If you watched my 10,000 subs live stream all the way to the very end, you'll notice that I announced a new contest to make it onto the next episode of Wheel of Time Jeopardy to face our two-time champion, Angry Trevor. I wanna review the qualifications right now and let you know about something that I plan on doing here on the channel fairly consistently. So I've partnered up with Make-A-Wish, a charity here in the United States that grants wishes for critically ill children. These wishes could be to meet their favorite celebrity, get a once in a lifetime experience, travel around the world, or just get to do something that they love before they pass away or, or while they're fighting a serious illness. These wishes do not only give these children a moment of happiness and of respite from their health struggles, 
but studies have shown that these children are actually statistically more likely to survive their illnesses when they have wishes granted for them. It is an organization that I've been supporting for years, and I wanted to be able to leverage this large community that we've built now here on this channel to help grant some wishes for some seriously ill children. I've committed to raising $5,000 to donate to the cause, and I'm going to shamelessly use Wheel of Time Jeopardy as a way to help reach that goal. At the time of this video's release, I have around 10,400 subscribers on the channel. If each one of my subscribers was able to donate $1, we would double that goal. So here's how you can enter the contest. For every $5 that you were able to donate to make a wish through our fundraiser, that will give you one entry into the Wheel of Time Jeopardy contest. You can donate to make a wish by clicking the link in the description below. Even if you do not want to be entered into the contest, I encourage you to simply donate a dollar or whatever you can give that'll help us grant some wishes for some children. Anything that you're able to do will be helpful, and I really want to be able to leverage this community to make a difference. Thank you to everybody who has already donated. Big shout out to Jennifer Wood for her very generous $250 donation, as well as all of the rest of you that have made significant donations as well. I'm going to make a donation slide here for future videos to honor those that have been able to help. Guys, thank you so much for participating, and thanks for watching, guys. Please make sure to click the link in the description below to get entered into the contest and like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Wheel of Time content. Make sure to check out my Patreon page if you want to support me making more Wheel of Time content. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?